Hello and welcome. Today I will provide some tips for studying successfully for the professional engineer test. Welcome to Engineering Simple. This video assumes you have reviewed the information on your state's website and all paperwork is ready to be submitted but you have not applied yet for the PE test application. So I would recommend watching my other videos with more tips on this step. So let's assume basically you have you read all the information on the website of your state, what is required for submitting your application, your PE application. Keep in mind they can change you know requirements as they as they would like so make sure you are up to date with their information so now let's assume you are really ready to submit the PE application but the first thing is before you commit to the PE test meaning before you submit your application and you have a, a test date review the main topics that could be on the PE test. You can refer to NCES practice exam book. It costs about $40. You can see if someone can, you, if you can borrow one from one of your coworkers or friends. Then assess your weakness areas based on those topics. Try to determine which which topics you are lacking knowledge and I'll give an example of myself when I took the PE test or be, what I, when I was preparing for the PE test I recognized that I didn't take classes in machines electric machines so I knew that was a weakness for me So then determine how you want to bridge your knowledge gap. Booth camp, PE study classes, obtain the proper reference books and study on your own. In my case, so once I determined that I was lacking some knowledge in electric machines, I, d I decided to buy a book in that t on that topic. So I bought a book and I kind of reviewed it quickly on my own, kind of highlighted some main topics, you know, just, just in case there is a question on the exam. So then once, so once you review the main topics that could be on the PE test and you assess your weakness areas and you determine how you want to bridge the gap, your knowledge gap, then that should give you an idea of how long you want to spend preparing for the test. So I would recommend three to six months. It depends on how, you know, um, it depends on your knowledge, basically. So then once you determine how long you want to prepare for the test, basically you are ready to submit your PA application. Now let's assume the PEA application is submitted. You are ready to start your study. Treat the PEA test like a project you want to lead to success with limited time and resources. Your end result is to pass the test. How am I going to pass this test? The following are some useful tips that could help reaching your end result. Time management is critical. How are you going to manage your time? Because so many topics, so many books, so many references. So you need to track your progress. So create, try to create a schedule with a start and a finish like you would do for any project. Allow a week or two prior to test date for recap and re reinforcement. 
on your schedule, list as many topics as possible and try to study all of them. For your schedule, you can use uh, Excel sheet, you can use OneNote or Word document, whatever you're comfortable with. In my case, I use Excel sheet and I, I have some screenshots in the following slides of my Excel sheet schedule. Because you want to make sure you, at least to a certain extent, you you study all topics. So this is a screenshot of the Excel sheet that I used for tracking my progress. So you can see the to the left. So I was counting. You know, I only prepared for the PE for eight weeks. Uh, for, sorry, for six weeks, and I'll. Um, basically, I had eight weeks from the start to the test date, but I only studied for six weeks. The reason for studying for the PE tests only for six weeks in my case was because at the time I was taking a I was taking power quality class for my masters, and in that class we we refreshed a lot of topics, you know, like symmetrical components, how to calculate uh, currents, voltages, impedances, you know, during s voltage swings, and so on and so forth. So, and I thought that was a good opportunity for me to attempt taking the P test. So, I went for it. Obviously, I don't recommend it for everyone, but for, it was a lot of stress because you know it's it's a lot of topics to to study in six weeks. But as you can see, to, you know from left to right. So I had okay number of weeks, days. So I was tracking every single day. And here uh, then number of days left to the exam, the date, and all the references I kind of touched on in some pages that I thought were very interesting. This is a second screenshot. So as you can see, the last two weeks I just skipped. So it was very overwhelming and I just, I skipped, but what I was doing was I was just um, trying to familiarize myself like with the NEC and NESC books. I was just trying to read the content table and make sure that I, I know what to look up, information, so on and so forth. So time management, then consistency. Develop your study pace and remain consistent. You can study for a couple of hours every day or every other day and augment as the exam day gets very close. Taking good notes, you will be surprised. Like it, sometimes I take notes at that time. My handwriting makes sense, but if a week or two go by then I have I can, I just can't read my my notes. Make sure you you take good notes because on the exam day you only have a few minutes per question, so you want to make sure you don't waste time. To, instead of trying to figure out what the problem is asking for, you're trying to read your notes. Bookmarking on the test day. There is no computer to do a search. You know, we, we became so dependent on technology. You know, you can Google about anything. But on the test day, there is no computer, so you can't search anything. You can't do search. So bookmark your reference books in a way that that would be easier to find what you are searching for and practice using them while doing problems. Use sticky notes to mark pages of interest. Write one or two keywords on the sticky notes because on the exam, 
You have so many books probably that you are taking to the exam and you want to you want to read the sticky notes and kind of figure out which page you want to open make a cheat sheet of equations some problems you came across that you think they are interesting authors notes as you go on make a list that includes name of the book or print print meaning if you if it's a pdf and you printed it page number topic basically as you're reading you know take a note you know uh, make a list on you know word document or you know hand note so that you can take take that to the pe test and you can refer reference easily. For example, if uh, the exam is a, a question is about impedance calculation, so I can go to my list. Oh, impedance calculation, book name, page number. Then I can open the book. You know, page easily. Four codes like NEC, NESC, etc. Be familiar with table of content and how information is organized, because obviously you can't read the NEC book is like over a hundred pages. There is no way you can read the whole thing, and there is no way you can remember everything. But make sure you are familiar with how the information is organized. For instance, information on uh, resistance, cable resistance. You know, make sure how the information is displayed. Make note of certain pages like motor calculations, tables for cables and resistance, etc. Study and strategy. Practice as if it is a real test. Sometimes we become so complacent. We think, oh, I know this information, I know this, I can solve this problem, and then I just skip. But practice, think, uh, pretend it's a real test. Really for the test, you want to make sure you understand the fundamental concepts rather than doing thousands of problems. You know, make sure you understand the, the concepts, because if you understand the concepts, you can solve pretty much any problem. But if you focus on doing problems, you might do a thousand problems, but if the problem if the problem is tweak, then you have no idea where to start. Before you start doing practice problems, pretend it was a test like I, like I stated. Time yourself and practice using reference books. Read the problem statements carefully. Do not assume you know the answer. May need to read it two to three times. Try to parse the problem statement. Usually there is distracting information not needed to solve the problem. Identify any distracting information. Sometimes the question is really is about referring the impedance from the secondary side of the transformer to the primary side of the transformer. But the problem, they might give you information on MVA, voltage, so on and so forth. That information is not really needed. All, so all you need is the equation to refer the impedance or current from one side to the other side of the transformer. So you can go straight to the ans uh, answering the problem instead of you know, reading, uh, reading all that information. Note on scratch paper information you will need to un or under underline it. Make a sketch or simple one line and label it properly. So as you read the problem, try to make a sketch. Sometimes pictures help a lot because the problem is a lot of words, you know, and it's so hard to remember everything that's said in the problem but if you make a sketch then things start making sense 
If you cannot figure out the answer, do not sp spend too much time. Remember, you only have six minutes per question. You have 80 questions in eight hours, so don't waste a lot of time. Is there an equation that can help? For, ex for example, the question is around capacitors. Then I can write down, I know the reactance of a capacitor is 1 over 2 pi F times C. F is frequency, C is capacitance. Then I start, okay, you know, from this little equation, as C increases, XC decreases, that means more current will flow. So then I can, then I can figure out the answer. Answers are multiple choice. Keep that in mind. Of the four choices, identify the, the ir irrelevant answers and focus on the other possible answers. So you have four, four answers. Probably one or two answers are obvious. You know, they, they have nothing to do with the, the problem. So toss those answers out and focus your energy and time on the other two to see which one you think is right. If all choices seem correct to you and you cannot think of any helpful hint, make an educated guess and mark page for later if time allows. Units of measure and conversion. Practice using st standard units. If you cannot remember universal units, add to your cheat sheet. For instance, you know the flux density is in Tesla, uh, flux is in Weber, uh, field intensity is amper meter. So if some units are in inches or feet, make sure you have the right, you make the right conversion. Otherwise, if you don't convert properly, you are going to get an answer that's wrong, but it's one of those four answers. Then you, then you end up uh, choosing the wrong answer. The test is developed such that all four answers seem to be correct. If you don't use the correct units, you may get an answer that is on the answer sheet, but not the correct answer. So that was it for the uh, for this video. Thank you, and I hope you find these tips helpful. Uh, you can refer to Engineering Simple for more videos. You can also reach me out at engineeringsimpleyt at gmail.com. Thank you, and have a good day.